I'm going to be showing you linear functions. Now the key thing with linear is this word line. Right? So these are straight lines. That's what these are going to be. So we're going to be talking about different ways of representing a straight line graph. By the way, that's why I don't know why this girl thought of this. This is awesome. <laughs> Slope sitting suit. <laughs> All right, so there's three different forms I'm going to show you. Uh, one of them is called the gradient y-intercept form. It's probably the most common one. You've very likely already seen it, but if you haven't, well, here it is. It goes y equals mx plus c. This is the format that you're probably used to. Okay, so let me label everything for you. We leave the y's and the x's, they have to exist, okay? So we're going to define this letter called m, which is the gradient. Some people call it a slope. For example, although I'm Canadian, I went to high school in the US, we call it slope, but gradient. And then we have something called c, which is your y-intercept. Now, there's another equation, by the way, that we get for the gradient. This is actually, by the way, this is on your formula booklet, so that's really nice. We also get something about the gradient. So how do we find the gradient? It's like the steepness of something. Well, um, they officially write it like this. They say it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the kind of official way. That's how it's written. You can also think of it as, you know, um, I don't know, delta y over delta x. Delta meaning a change. So that's like a change in your y over change in x. Some people, the y they call it a rise. And some people call this run. It's like how much does it go up or down divided by how much does it go across. Either of these ways is okay. But just so you know, this is what you get on your uh, formula booklet. And what's the y-intercept? That's where it crosses the y-axis. So let's take a look at this particular graph right here. So on this particular one, let's see, the y-intercept is real easy it crosses at y equals 1, right? So I'm going to say the y int, I'll be okay with that if I say y int for short for intercept, is just going to be 1. So now I know my equation is for sure going to go y equals, um, I'll just put an example here, y equals something times x plus 1. Now I have to figure out what goes here. So I need to know the gradient. To do the gradient, there's a couple ways. You could just pick two points on this graph. So I could pick this point right here and maybe a point like here because that's sort of where it's nice. And I like to make like a dotted line like this and I think about like what's delta y and what's delta x. So how much does it go across? Well, I went across by 1. How much does it go up or down? Well, it went down by 1, 2. So it's actually minus 2. Notice then I can say my gradient then. Let's see. It equals delta y over delta x, like change in y, that's what y2 minus y1 means, it's change in y's divided by the change in x's. And in this case, it's going to be minus 2 over 1, so it's just minus 2. Well, that's my m. That's the value that's going to go here. That's why it's going to be 2x plus 1. So therefore, I could say that my equation then goes y equals 2x plus 1. There you go, you're done. So that's how you could solve this particular question. Another way to look at it, though, what I like to think about for gradients is the definition really means for every one unit you go to the right, you have to go up or down by the gradient. So in this case, I go over 1, I go down by 2, instantly I know it's 2. Whoops. Did you notice I made a mistake? I can see it right here. I can notice it right here. Look, it's supposed to be a minus 2. See, even I make mistakes. There we go. I was just saying it goes down by 2 when I was looking at didn't have it. Maybe you noticed it when I was writing it. Well, there you go. I didn't do this on purpose. I made an honest mistake, but see, as long as you find it, that's what matters. So y equals minus 2x plus 1, because for every 1 you go right, you go down by 2. So that's this gradient y-intercept form. I like this one. This tells you the gradient and the y-intercept. Duh, that's why we call it that. There's another form. This way right here, honestly, I don't really like it very much. I don't find it very useful, but oh well. Uh, it goes ax plus by plus d equals 0. That's another form. So this, you just have to find out what's a, what's b, what's d. So in this case right here, what I would normally do is just take this form right here. Imagine if I just moved the y over to the right. You notice that I would have like mx minus y plus c equals 0, and that is now in this general form. So just in case you're asked, let me just show you. So we have something in general form like this. 2x plus 3y minus 5 equals 0. What's the gradient? This form isn't very helpful for that. See, this form would be helpful. Wouldn't this be a nice form to have? mx plus c form, where I have y by itself. I have some junk with x's, 
then I have other junk with no x's by themselves. That's what I'm going to do with this equation. So I'm just going to get it. That's going to be my goal. Okay, is rewrite. I'm just going to rewrite in y equals mx plus c form. Because the gradient is just this. That's the gradient. That's what I actually want. Okay, so that's all I need to do is just look at this. So let's rewrite this thing. Right now it looks like a mess, so let's move everything over except for the y. So I'm going to leave the 3y to the left. My minus 5 goes to the right, becomes a plus 5. And my 2x uh, moves to the right, becomes a minus 2x. Now, I normally write it with the stuff with the x's first. So I'm going to rewrite it. Watch carefully. I'm just going to go 3y equals minus 2x plus 5. It's the same thing. The order doesn't matter, except it makes it easier to see what's going on. Now, y isn't quite by itself, is it? I'm going to have to divide everything by y. Uh, by 3, sorry. So I'm going to have minus 2 over 3 times x plus 5 over 3. This is now in y equals mx plus c form. Why is that helpful? Because this is the gradient. And by the way, if I wanted the y-intercept, that would be this. So I wonder where does it cross the y-axis. This form is way more useful, I think, than this. But there you go. That's just uh, a way. So what's the answer, by the way? The answer is just gradient. I'll just write it down here. The gradient equals minus 2 thirds. There we go. So that's how I can actually solve this one. Now there's a third form, and this one actually is useful. It's called point gradient form. I was taught it, we called it point slope form. Doesn't matter. By the way, I like this one. I'm in, you can't spell it or she can't spell it. I'm good at math. All right, point gradient form. How does that one go? Well, just like it says, it's nice if you know the gradient and you know a specific point. So if you know a point, we'll call it x1, y1. So this is some point that you know. And you know this. Let's say you also know the gradient. Let's pretend you also know that. Well, then a nice form, it looks kind of like, well, it actually comes from the definition of a gradient. If you really think about it, you're going to see what we're going to do here. This is like an M here. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to say, whoops. I'm going to say, it um, goes like this. It goes y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. What this really means is it's like delta y equals m times delta x. It's kind of like, look, if I got m by itself, and I divided then by the x minus x1 over here, wouldn't it be kind of like this? So it just kind of comes from the definition of a gradient. So this is just a form. So it just says, hey, if you know the gradient, which is m, remember, that's what m is. m is still the gradient, so that's useful, OK? And you know this point, x1, comma y1. You just put those in and you get the answer. So let's see if we can do something with this. So a straight line passes through this point and this point. Find the equation of a line in the form y equals mx plus c. So whew, at least it's a nice form. So let's do this. I guess we first need to know the gradient. That would help, wouldn't it? Because, I mean, we got to know this. Once we find this, that's the gradient, right? So let's actually first start by finding that. So the gradient will just be equal to delta y over delta x. That's how we define the gradient. Remember at the beginning? That's uh, y1 minus, uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I do that, I'm going to have, let's see now, I can have y2, maybe I'll label them so it's easier to see, and this is x2, this will be y1, and this will be x1. If I do y2 minus y1, to show you the full way to do it, but once you've done it a lot, you'll sort of skip this step here. Well, it's 2 minus 1. And then if I do this one here, it's 6 minus 2. All right, well, what's 2 minus 1? It's just 1. 6 minus 2 is just 4. So my gradient then is 1 fourth. That's nice to know. Now I know my gradient, right? That is m. Yay. Well, how do I find my y-intercept? Well, now I can use this form. See, I'm going to use this form right here. I'm going to use this point slope form of this gradient uh, form. So I'm going to say use this form right here, except I know what m is. m is 1 fourth. All right? And I'm, I'm going to actually fill in my x1 and y1 values. I know these as well. I know that y1, now it depends which ones I want to use. Did you know I could have used 6, 2 as well? It didn't actually matter, as long as you know a point. So I could have used 2, 1 as my point, or I could have used 6, 2 as my point. It should still work because a straight line has to pass through both points. So I'll just put in the first point, maybe. So I'll say that'll be 1. This one here will be 2, because that's what x1 is, see? 2 and 1. So 2 here, 1 here. 
and I just fill it in. So I go y minus 1, whoops, equals 1 fourth times x minus 2. Now I just have to figure this out. So let me see here. I'll leave the y minus 1 here, and I'll have to do 1 fourth times x. That's just x over 4th. All right, fine. 1 fourth times minus 2 is minus 2 over 4. That's what that gives me. Um, all right, so then I have y minus 1 equals, let's see, it's x over 4, and minus 2 over 4 is the same thing as minus 1 half. All right. I want to move my minus 1 to the right, so I guess I'll do that. So y equals x over 4 minus 1 half plus 1. Technically, I guess i got to get a common denominator here. So I'm almost done. It's just a little bit long, right? But I'll get a common denominator. I'll say it's uh, minus 1 half. This has to be something over 2. Well, if I want this over 2, it's like this little 1 here, right? And 1 times 2 gives me 2. So 1 times 2 gives me 2 here. There we go. And minus 1 plus 2 is just minus 1 half. So finally, I've got my form because y equals x over 4 minus 1 half. This is my final answer. Phew! So that was a little bit lengthy, wasn't it? Um, oops, that's not minus one half, is it? Uh, minus one half plus two halves is actually plus one half. Oops, there we go. I just realized I did the right thing. Mathematically, I just wrote the wrong thing. Here we go. So x over four plus one half. That'll make sense. Now, why would you ever use this stuff? Well, I mean, there's lots of places where we have gradients and straight lines. I mean, there's slopes, there's gradients, sure, in math. I mean, I'm just thinking of things that I've experienced. Now, it depends where you live. Maybe there's no snow where you are, but at least for me in Canada where I'm from, I mean, there's lots of snow. This is actually at a place called Sunshine. Uh, it's near Calgary in Canada. And there's a place called Delirium Dive. It's awesome. It's a little bit steep, obviously. This is why the sky is looking over there. You really do have to jump off. Although if you're a little bit scared, there's stairs to go down. But I mean, it looks like it's straight down. It's not. Uh, you know, mountain roads are important. Gradients of ramps, for example, uh, those are really important. Gliders, so these airplanes that have no engines, in case you didn't know that, uh, they have a glide ratio. Now, what does that mean? That means that for every 30, let's say, meters, they go across. Let's say glide ratio of 30 to 1 means they go over 30 for every 1 they drop. That's not to scale, obviously, but see what I mean? So this thing, that's a very good glide ratio. And 70 is even better, right? They move a lot further before they drop. Like something like the space shuttle, this old spaceship that they used to use, for example, um, that only had like 4.5 to 1. So that thing was just kind of dropping like a rock. So it all depends, you know. So glide ratios, slopes, gradients, we do find them not only in math, but also in an everyday life, depending on how steep things are and whatever. So hopefully these things will help.